Allie, and we are back to our regularly scheduled programming. If you did not see my video on Wednesday, then you will not know that for the entire month of November, I am posting twice a week. Wednesday is going to be weekly writing vlogs chronicling my NaNoWriMo experience, and then Friday are going to be our usual sit-down videos where we sit and chat about something writing-related. So um, be sure to subscribe and like the videos and do all of the fun YouTube stuff. Ring the notification bell if you want to know exactly when um, videos go up. That being said, this is the first Friday of this two videos per week November. There's no catchy name for that. Um, and uh, our topic for today is actually going to be somewhat NaNoWriMo related, and that is that I'm going to be doing the story idea tag. So I actually had a ton of different ideas for what video to film today. I originally was going to talk about something Hemingway related and then I was like, I don't know that you guys want to hear about that. Um, so I um, was kind of just going over and over in my head about what um, I should post and what you guys would want to see. And ultimately I decided to uh, look for a tag to film because that's what we YouTubers do when we have nothing else to do. So um, I actually, you know, I kid, but this tag is actually a really good fit for this kind of November NaNoWriMo season because I am posting these weekly writing vlogs about what I'm doing, how my writing's going, all of that stuff, but I haven't really told you much about what the actual story is and things like that, and this is the story idea tag, so there is going to be a little bit more information about what exactly it is I'm writing. So um, without further ado, I'm going to get into the tag. I will leave the original creators linked down below, of course, and let's get into the questions. Question number one is current story. What is your current story idea that you are working on right now? So I am currently working on a young adult fantasy that I've been working on more diligently for a little over a year, but um, kind of off and on ever since like high school. It is about a girl named Rowan who has her entire city burnt to the ground from this mysterious group of cloaked individuals. And she manages to escape the burning city with only the clothes on her back and a small orphan boy <laughs> tagging along beside her. And uh, they are only able to escape and survive thanks to the charity of three strangers who uh, may not be exactly who they claim to be. So um, there's what you're gonna get from me for now. Uh, I am really bad at coming up with very concise descriptions of what I'm writing as I'm writing it, but once I'm done with this draft, maybe we'll, we'll get closer uh, to, to a perfect one sentence synopsis. But this is what you're getting for now, so. Number two is spark of inspiration. Do your ideas begin with character, plot, world building, or something else entirely? As far as me personally, this current story idea that I am working on at this NaNoWriMo was somewhat care, it was character based because I listened to a song and I just kind of had this vision of um, two characters sitting across a bonfire from one another and um, one of them was dressed like a knight and the other was playing the lyre. It was very uh, kind of like folksy, medieval, Lord of the Ringsy look to it. One of them ended up being Rowan, and the uh, other character was someone else who uh, I will will not mention. And um, anyway, a lot of my ideas are character based. I imagine like a character and the way that they feel and kind of their base point, and then I come up with the story that would logically fall from that, from what is their kind of, what's their deal, and then how can I make them a better person or a worse person, or whatever the case may be, through the course of a story, and then I come up with the plot events that way. Uh, but I have had other story ideas that were more concept-based. Uh, I'm not a huge plot-based idea creator. I don't know. I do like coming up with plot, but usually I have to do that more methodically. I can't just like know that off the top of my head. Number three is brainstorm. How do you puzzle piece your story elements together? Do you start with the ending and make your way to the beginning or vice versa? I'm actually really interested in trying starting at the end and working my way forward. Uh, that is a piece of writing advice that I have seen in some recent books, uh, most notably in the book that I'm reading for our live show for Writers in Progress, November 16th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, that is my, um, my personal book in addition to Stephen King's On Writing that we're all reading. Um, I've been reading Anatomy of Story by John Truby, and that's one of the things that he suggests is that you start kind of with the end, with the themes, with the overall point of the story, and then you work your way back. Um, but that's not something I've actually tried in my own writing. Before this current project, I was more of a pantser, so I just started at the beginning and then s waited to see what happened. And now that I am a planner, I started more so with just fundamental acts, seeing where the big events were going to happen, and then filling in the gaps with little mini plot developments. And so that's kind of what I've been doing for this project, but I am really interested to see if I might 
enjoy starting at the end and working my way forward that might make endings a little bit easier than they currently are so uh yeah that's the way that i do it number four is keep or toss how do you know when you want to keep or dump a story idea i don't really toss any out i am a story idea hoarder i just kind of put them on the shelf and i let them sit there and usually i found that those ideas will end up kind of fermenting and then they come out better than they started so even if an idea doesn't feel fully fleshed out yet i usually can just put them aside and by the time that I come back to them, I'll have new fresh ideas, fresh experiences that I can use in that story. That's actually what happened with my current NaNoWriMo project. That young adult fantasy has changed so much since I first had the idea and I'm so glad for it because I think the story is just fundamentally better now than it was before. I still like the original idea that I had, but it's not the idea, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, I don't really toss anything out. I don't think you should throw away ideas because there is a huge power in just like putting them aside and coming back to them later. There's probably some ideas that I will never come back to ever, but they're still never leaving my brain, if that makes sense. Number five is original idea. How much of your original idea for your story is actually used once everything is finished? Um, well, I just kind of talked about that. So, I mean, it really depends on the story, but almost always since my ideas usually tend to be very character or concept based, they change a lot because the question isn't so much how do I make this plot work, rather it's how do I create the best plot for this character, how do I create the most efficient story for this concept, and so on and so forth. So that is going to change as my opinions of what the answer to that question is change. So what I originally thought this story idea would be is not what it is now, and I like it better for it, but um, it's very, very different from my original conception of the idea. Number six is hide or share. Do you share your book ideas with friends or keep them a secret? Funny enough, I am much more likely to share my story ideas with people on the internet than I am to share them with people I know in real life. Um, and that's not because I'm like embarrassed of my story ideas or anything. I just have so much anxiety that it is just torture to hand my work to anybody, um, especially somebody that I like genuinely really care for their opinion. And it's a lot easier to manage that on the internet, not because I feel like internet people aren't real people or whatever, like obviously I know that there are people on the other side of the screen, but more so I feel like I can more so manage what stuff I'm giving to them. So if they are like, hey, anybody want to share a line from the thing that you just worked on? I get to choose what line I share. It's not like I just hand them the entire thing and I'm like, all right, pick it apart, because uh, that would give me just severe, severe anxiety. And that's not so much the case once I feel proud of something or confident in something. And I'm not, you know, like terribly hard on myself anymore like I used to be, where I will seek out uh, critiques and I will seek out um, constructive criticism and stuff. It's just that I don't like doing that when the story is so much still on its like baby Bambi legs, <laughs> where I'm just like, I'm trying to figure it out for myself. So I don't want anybody else's input at that time. I want to figure it out myself and then I will give it to friends and family to help me progress and help me grow more. Um, and yeah, so on the internet, I'm okay with it. And I don't share like the entirety of the story idea cause you know, you don't want to put all of that stuff on the internet, but um, I do share more on the internet than I share in person to my IRL friends and family. Number seven is dream. Have any of your book ideas originated with a dream slash nightmare? For me personally, no. Um, I do, ever since I was a kid, I have had my dreams almost exclusively feature people that are not me in situations that are not logical. So it's usually like I have a little movie that plays in my head every time I go to sleep. So um, that's pretty cool, but also it's still a dream. So it makes no sense and it changes like every six seconds or something. So there's no reliable through line that I can personally transfer into an actual story. So I haven't really taken anything from dreams aside from some cool little like tidbits of ideas that I might end up using later in some other larger story that I come up with independently of my subconscious. Number eight is Doppelganger. Have you ever had an idea for a story but then seen a similar premise in a book slash TV show slash movie? Okay, this is kind of like a joke answer, but when I was a kid, I remember that I had an idea for this girl who was a regular girl, but then during like the night, she had this double life as a pop star. And I can't remember what she was called, 
but it was something very similar to Hannah Montana. And I could have sworn to you as a child that I came up with the idea first. So Disney stole my idea for Hannah Montana. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that is kind of it as far as that goes. I've really not had any stories where I'm like, oh crap, like that's exactly what I was trying to do. Um, obviously some things have similar tropes and they have similar settings or whatever, and that's just gonna happen when you write a book. It's nothing fundamental about the story to the point where I'm like, damn it, like I can't write the story anymore. So uh, yeah, no, not really. Number nine is big screen inspiration. Have any of your favorite movies slash TV shows sparked ideas for scenes in your book? Only thing that I can really think of is settings because I, you know, I can try to build my imagination to have these uh, big structures and stuff like that, but usually the way that I imagine stories happening in my head is pretty much just like the characters and whatever immediate objects are around them. So when it comes to overall setting like the entire city or the entire kingdom or the entire country or whatever, then I uh, usually turn to Pinterest boards and to mood boards and things like that to give me inspiration for how those things would look and research as well is a big one. So yeah, there's there's little bits and stuff, but not anything really substantial that I can think of. So just little things, mostly setting stuff. And number 10 is nostalgia. What is the oldest slash first story idea you remember coming up with slash writing down? My first story idea that I ever really came up with aside from when I just ripped off the boxcar children as a child, <laughs> um, was a story called Secrets of a Seventh Grader, and I wrote it right after I finished the entire Twilight series. I immediately, like, got up and grabbed a composition notebook and started writing that story, The Secrets of a Seventh Grader, and it was the worst. It was absolutely terrible. It was like if you combined the House of Night series with the vampires and, like, they had s special tattoos on their face, and you combine that with Twilight in terms of like the love triangle and all of that stuff, but instead of vampires or werewolves or anything, they were just like magic. So that was the first original, heavy quotations on original, story idea that I had. That is all 10 questions on this tag, which means that that is it for me this week. I will be tagging some people down in the description below. I know that tag videos have kind of gone out of fashion on booktube and authortube lately, but uh, I don't care because I like a good tag video, so I'm going to be tagging some people just in case they want to make it, but no pressure because I know they're not really like the bee's knees anymore on this platform. But uh, anyway, I figure that this tag is a pretty good one to do around this time of year because NaNoWriMo has dawned. We are all uh, struggling through our own story ideas at the moment, so a story idea tag seems to be a pretty good fit for right now. So um, that is going to be it for me this week. If you liked this video, give it a like. And if you like my content, do subscribe. I make videos every Friday. And for the month of November, I'm also making videos every Wednesday as well. So tune in on Wednesdays for those writing vlogs as well. And additionally, <laughs> tune in to Leah's channel, where, where in the world is Leah Jane? on November 16th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for our first live show. We are doing our first Writers in Progress live show talking about different writing practice books. So we will be reading Stephen King's On Writing in addition to each of us having our own individual books that we are kind of bringing to the table. So um, if you want to hear anything more about those or get some tips and tricks for NaNoWriMo, then uh, definitely go over to her channel at that time because it's our first live show and we're very excited. So uh, that is actually going to be it for me now. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.